It all started when excerpts from a new book by royal historian and biographer Robert Lacey were published in late October. In his book, Battle of Brothers, Lacey claims that Earl Spencer, who was Princess Diana's brother, told friends that Prince Harry had approached him asking to borrow the iconic Spencer tiara from Meghan to wear. According to Lacey, Earl Spencer said that he'd readily agreed to loan the tiara, but that in the end, Meghan was not allowed to wear it. Now, the Spencer tiara is considered one of the most prized possessions in the Spencer family jewelry collection. It was originally commissioned in 1919 by Lady Sarah Spencer for her daughter, Diana, Viscountess Althorpe. It's made of diamonds and platinum and formed into a diamond festoon design. When Diana, Princess of Wales, married Prince Charles in 1981, she wore the Spencer tiara. So it clearly held immense sentimental value as something linked directly to Diana. However, according to Lacey and Earl Spencer, Meghan was denied permission to borrow and wear the tiara on her big day. But by whom? That's where things get a bit murky. Lacey implies, but does not directly state, that it may have been the Queen or other senior royals who vetoed Meghan wearing any tiara that was not part of the royal family's private collection. He says Earl Spencer claimed Harry told him it was a general feeling that Meghan should stick to royal jewels. Naturally, these allegations have triggered lots of debate online. On the one hand, some say it's understandable the royals would want a newcomer like Meghan to wear established royal tiaras rather than a treasure from another family on her wedding day. However, others argue it seems rather rude and insensitive given the tiara's history with Harry's late mother Diana. Most controversially of all, some have suggested it shows signs of subconscious racism or reluctance to fully embrace Meghan into the royal family. However, we should be very careful about making definitive conclusions based on rumors alone. The Spencer and royal families themselves have remained silent on Lacey's claims. Several key details are also lacking that could provide important context. For example, we don't know the exact wording Earl Spencer claims Harry used or whether anyone specific is being blamed. It could well have been a joint decision involving all parties for legitimate practical or traditional reasons rather than any ill intent. Furthermore, there are no other credible reports to corroborate Earl Spencer's alleged version of events. Neither he nor Harry have publicly commented on the matter. And palace sources told major publications that they would not be drawn into responding to claims in unauthorized books, which calls into question whether Lacey's account should be taken as absolute fact. So in summary, while it's an intriguing historical nugget if true, we must be wary of treating rumor and hearsay as proven truth, especially when making accusations. There are two sides to every story and often more nuance beneath the surface. At the end of the day, only Earl Spencer, Prince Harry, the royal family, and those directly involved likely know the full true account of what happened with the Spencer tiara unless and until they choose to verify or dispute Lacey's claims publicly. We can't say definitively if Meghan was genuinely denied the tiara or if there were legitimate practical reasons at play instead of any ill intent, as some have speculated online. All we can do is take such alleged revelations with a grain of salt rather than treating them as absolute facts. Consider there may be more to the story than meets the eye and avoid rushing to harsh judgments without the full picture. Historical accuracy is one thing, but spreading unverified rumors risks seriously damaging reputations if not grounded firmly in fact. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Do you think there's fire where there's smoke with the Spencer Tiara story? Or could there be multiple sides to an incident that's being blown out of proportion? Sound off in the comments below. But with that, we've come to the end of another episode. As always, Please remember to like and subscribe if you found this video interesting and want to see more royal rumors revealed in the future. And remember to take everything with a grain of salt. Not everything you read online should be treated as absolute fact. Use your critical thinking skills and consider there may be more context beneath sensational claims. We'll see you next time for another intriguing installment. Bye for now.